Cutting and installing crown molding can be tricky, and there's lots of ways to approach the task. But today we're going to show you a couple of techniques of using a miter saw to cut your crown molding. So for today's demo, we're going to assume that your walls join at 90 degrees. We know that's a long shot. And we're also going to use the most common type of crown molding because that's what you'll find at your local big box stores. What's the easiest way to wrap crown molding around an outside corner? It's to put it onto the miter saw as if it were in place on the wall. It's almost like we flipped the house upside down. So in this case, the fence is the wall and the bed of the saw is the ceiling. And you can tell the bottom of the crown molding by this cove. To form the outside corner, now all we have to do is set the saw blade to 45 degree, and then with the molding in place, just slice away. To make the reciprocal cut, all you have to do is swing your power head over to 45 degrees this way, put your molding in place, and you'll wind up with a really nice crown molding cut. Now, you probably see that the only caveat is you need to have a fence that's tall enough to hold the molding as it would be on the wall. And that's where a jig often comes in handy. For example, like this crown cut jig from Benchdog, it not only has stops that can go up taller so that you can cut really large pieces of crown molding, but it also has this really cool crown stop, which ensures that you hold your molding in exactly the right orientation. So, what if your fence on your miter saw is too short and you don't have a jig to hold it in place? Well, the good news is that's exactly the problem that these compound miter saws are designed to fix. To make that work, first we place the piece of molding flat and then we're going to adjust both the miter and the bevel of the saw. The advantage to that is I can cut really wide pieces of crown molding and I get to hold the, uh, the molding down flat. Now, to make it easier for myself, I'm going to put a piece of tape on there to identify what the top of the molding is. To make the left side of an outside corner, tilt the saw bevel to the left and set it at 33.9 degrees. Your saw probably has that bevel angle marked or maybe even a positive stop. Swing the saw table to 31.6 degrees left. And again, your saw most likely has a stop there. Now place the bottom edge of the molding against the fence and make the cut. The right side of the workpiece is your molding. So that gives us the left leg of an outside corner. To make the right side of an outside corner, leave the bevel at 33.9 degrees, swing the table to 31.6 degrees right, and place the top edge of the molding against the fence. The right side of the workpiece is your molding. And now we've just cut the right hand leg. Now to make the inside corner, the bevel remains the same, but the other parts are all reversed. For the left side of an inside corner, the table swings right. The top of the molding goes against the fence, and the left side of the workpiece is the keeper. For the right side of an inside corner, the table swings left. The bottom of the molding goes against the fence, and after the cut, you use the left side. Now, another traditional way of forming those inside corners is by scribing and coping, but we're not going to cover that here today. I do hope you found the tips that we've provided about mitering crown molding with a miter saw to be useful. I know it's kind of a complicated topic, but if you just take your time, follow the step-by-steps, you're going to be successful. I'm Rob Johnstone from Woodworkers Journal. Keep on making sawdust.